The photo exhibition titled Tibet, Past and Present, was held in Beijing's Cultural Palace of the Nationalities from April 30th to July 25th, 2008. The exhibition was jointly sponsored by the United Front Work Department of the CPC Central Committee, the State Council Information Office, the State Ethnic Affairs Commission, and the Government of the Tibet Autonomous Region with the assistance of the Cultural Palace of the Nationalities and the Tibet Exhibition Center. Tibet is a place bestowed with time owner civilization and some earliest human activities were recorded over tens of thousands of years ago. In the 7th century, Tibetan leader Sun Tsang Kampo united all tribes who resided in Qinghai Tibet Plateau and set up the Tilbo regime with capital in Lhasa. In 641, Sun Tsang Kampo and Princess Wencheng from the Tang Dynasty tied the knot. In 710, tried Chotsam married Princess Jincheng of the Tang Dynasty. Thereafter, 191 business contacts and eight meetings have been held in the 213-year-long exchanges. The ancient long drum and string instrument, previously housed in the Patala Palace, was brought to Tubo by Princess Wencheng. This is a musical instrument used in the Buddhist mass to mark the launching of Sam Yen Temple. The painting Emperor Taizong meeting the Tibetan envoy portrays the Tang Emperor Taizong's reception of Tubo's envoy Gak Tung San, who came to ask for marriage of Princess Wen Cheng on behalf of Song Tsang Kampu. This is a sculpture of the Song Tsang Kampu couple adored in the Patala Palace. The carving of Sakyamuni, which was brought to by Princess Wen Cheng to Tubo, is now housed in the Jokang Temple in Lhasa. In early 13th century, Genghis Khan set up the Mongol Khanate north of China and the Tibetan Mongol leader soon began their friendly exchanges with the new empire. In 1247, at the invitation of Mongolian general Kuo Duan, Gongga Gyang Chan, an eminent monk with the Sakya sect, took his nephew Pakba to Liangzhou to meet Kuo Duan. After discussion, the terms of Tibet's submission to Mongolia were settled. In 1260, Kubla Khan became the emperor and appointed Pakba state teacher and director of the general management court to deal with Tibet's political and religious affairs. In 1271, Kubla Khan founded the Yuan dynasty and Tibet became an administrative region directly under the jurisdiction of central government. In addition to succeed Yuan Dynasty's control over Tibet, Ming Dynasty government developed its governance over the region by building local administrative and military setups in Tibet. The political system containing different rankings such as Wan Hu, Qian Hu or Bai Hu was further strengthened. Tibetan High Lamas also received the appointment from the Ming Emperor as the great merciful Buddhist king. The government also conferred titles of State Initiation Tutor, Promotion Prince of Virtue and Guardian Prince of Doctrine to Tibetan Lamas. Tibet also paid tributes to the main court and received rewards from it. In 1652, the fifth Dalai Lama was summoned to Beijing, and the next year he was conferred the title Dalai Lama to be in charge of affairs of Tibetan Buddhism by Emperor Shunzhi. The Panchan Lama was granted an imperial gold edit book and gold seal in 1713 for a formal recognition of his status as Panchan Erdeni by Qing Dynasty. The Qing's royal court set up Tibet governorship in 1727. In 1751, the Tibetan regional government Gasha was founded. In 1793, the Qing government published an important royal decree of Article 29, which clarified regulations in regional personnel and financial field. Meanwhile, the central government also introduced a new system of determining the reincarnated soul of a deceased living Buddha by drawing a lot from the golden urn. This cultural relic is Kapala Bowl, a tribute to Qing Emperor Qianlong from the Sixth Panchan Lama. This is a replica of the golden urn. The reincarnated soul of a deceased living Buddha will be determined by drawing a lot from it. There are only two golden urns, one housed in Jokang Temple in Lhasa, while the other preserved in Lama Temple in Beijing. This is a decree that records the fifth Panchan Lama was conferred the title from Qing Emperor Kangxi. 
This is the sixth Pan Chan. In the sixth year of Emperor Qianlong's reign, he was enthroned in Chash Lumpo Monastery. The sixth Pan Chan Lama passed away at the age 42 in Huangzi Temple in Beijing. This is the text of imperially approved ordinance for the more efficient governance of Tibet. The below is a notice informing the Qing government minted coins in Tibet, including a photo of the ancient coin's image. This is a series of file photos telling the Tibetan fight against British invasion that occurred in 1904. This is a Tibetan hero who had joined the fight against British invasion, describes the heroic deeds in the conflict to ethnic minority locals. This is the 13th Dalai Lama Tumba Gyantso, who was officially installed in the Patala Palace and died in 1933 in Tibet. The Republic of China's government granted him an ordinary title to reward his contribution in safeguarding the sovereignty. The fresco paintings portray a meeting between Empress Dowager Cixi and the 13th Dalai Lama in Beijing. During the meeting, the Empress gave a pearl mandala as a gift to the 13th Dalai Lama. It now receives worshippers in the Patala Palace. The Republic of China was founded in 1912, which brought together the Han, Manchurian, Mongolian, Hui, and Tibetan ethnic groups. The provisional constitution of the Republic of China stipulated that Tibet was one of the 22 provinces of the Republic of China. During the period, both the 13th Dalai Lama and the 9th Pencha Lama were granted the honorific titles. In 1929, the central government established the Mongolian and Tibetan Affairs Commission to exercise sovereignty in Tibet. Both the 13th Dalai Lama and the 9th Pencha Lama well maintained ties with the central government. In the years 1931, 1936, 1949, Tibet sent their secular officials and monk representatives to attend the National Congress, during which the 9th Pencha Lama and a group of reputed Tibetan figures had been appointed central government officials. The photo was taken in 1940 ahead of the official installation ceremony of the 14th Dalai Lama. The Republic of China sent special envoy to meet reincarnated young Dalai Lama. This is the statue of the 14th Dalai Lama in the ceremony. This is Thabchen Yenpo Tishi Jiangtin, the fifth head lama of Jiatin Monastery. In 1934, he was appointed the regent of Tibet. He was forced to step down by pro-British splitting forces in 1941. Jiatin Lama died in 1947 in Lhasa. This is the official seal used in Dalai Lama's Chongqing office during the Republic of China. This is the official seal used in Panchen Lama's office in Chongqing. The photo records the official installation ceremony held in Qinghai for the 10th Panchen Lama. Before 1959, Tibet had long been a society of feudal serfdom under the despotic political and religious rule of lamas and nobles. Now let's take a look at the dark society under the rule. This is a chart showing the organization of old Tibetan government. The Tibetan local government led by Dalai Lama who enjoyed the highest social status is called Gasha in Tibetan. There were also subordinate organs and local offices. The Dalai Lama created an official position responsible for the operation of the Ptala Palace in Dalai's daily life. The statutory code of old Tibet stipulated that people were unequal in status by dividing all into three classes and nine ranks. The law also clarified the value of human life like this. The lives of people belonging to the highest rank of the upper class were calculated to be worth the weight of the dead body in gold, while the lives of people belonging to the lowest rank of the lower class were worth a straw rope. Now let's take a look at the strata of old Tibetan society. Serf owners were mainly local officials, nobles and upper-ranking lamas accounted for 5% of Tibet's population. The serfs and slaves made up about 95%. 5% of Tibet's population